Hello? This is one mana left. And I think this will be probably my third total Mana Righteous Fire video, and this is the final form. I've played this build now for about two weeks. It has been my go-to farmer. I've made it very fast, very high geared, and I've gotten it to the point where it can do some insane things. Um, so I'm going to showcase in this video what I've got it up to, but I'm going to show off what the final form looks like. Um, obviously I have a very high budget, but to do this, I don't think you need my budget. I made a POB that I just added up. You could get this lower, but it was 126 divines, which is still a lot for a lot of people. But when you look at the numbers in this 126 divine POB, it, <laughs> it can, it's basically half my damage. I have 41 mil in the Righteous Fire setup. Well, I, I, I have about 35 mil in the Righteous Fire setup. Dep it depends on the config, whatever. This build has half that. I have half a billion in the swap setup. This build also has half that. Um, but that means it can delete an uber pinnacle boss, like, instantly. And it can even delete, like, a 2 billion health max HP delve boss playing a Righteous Fire setup. Now, you might think, how do you do that? Well, the reason Righteous Fire never gets to do the things that are, like, insane in this game is typically because, one, it can't scale hard enough, but this league with the mana Righteous Fire, it can scale really hard. But two, it still doesn't scale as hard as some of the cheesiest builds in the game, and it's limited by the dot cap. So the dot cap is 35 million. You cannot get more dot than that because of how uh, damage is coded in this game is uh, damage per minute. So it caps out at 2 billion per minute. So you can't do more than 35 mil DPS. But I've made it so that I still have a Righteous Fire character. I've been playing this way for like a week now, and I love it. Uh, and my standards for what's like a strong build are very high. I, I, I exclusively play just like Planet Eater builds. So this is a setup that is very, very fast at farming with Righteous Fire. That uses a weapon swap. To do reverse snapshot arc mage in the same setup and do like half a billion dps so the merits to this it still farms really fast but when you get to something that you can't kill with righteous fire and uh, deploy the weapon swap i'll show off a little bit what the play style is and then i'll show you some like really end game hard fights with the swap setup and then finally, I'll show you um, the POB I made that I price checked it. I'll, I'll go through the breakdown. I'm pretty knowledgeable in the price of some of these items. I craft these every league, and I, I, I set the price based off the current prices, not the price when I typically craft them, which would be considerably cheaper. And this was 126 divines, which, like I said, that that setup has. Where's Joe the Hierophant? Like, this, this setup still has 22k ES and 16k mana. With 17 mil in the Righteous Fire setup and a quarter billion in the Swap setup. This is, like, one of the most endgame, like, number profiles you'll see for 126. So you could probably downscale it even more. But I just had some points where I didn't want to make concessions that you maybe could. But I'll start off, I'll just show the reason that Righteous Fire is good. Mapping. In fact, I'll even go ink AoE, and we'll just make this really wide. This is really, really wide. And I, I've got the cast when channeling uh, Frostblink set up, and it, it's pretty good movement. So I clear maps very fast. I just Frostblink around with Cyclone, and I have enough dot damage that pretty much everything just dies instantly. Like, you know, it's... It is a wide, wide setup, and it's very fast. So, th this is just how I map. Like, this is... You know, the bosses are dead already. It's... Like, it's still with... Uh, with Ink AoE, it's still 25 mil. With Burning Damage, it's like 35. But, like, you know, I, I can clear Canyon in like 30 seconds. Everything just dies. Alright. But, I'm gonna show off why this is strong. So, the thing is, 
let's say you fight something that has a medium amount of HP. Let's say you're going to fight a, a Guardian of the Phoenix. Oh, I don't have witness for this. Whatever. Let's say you're going to fight a Phoenix. A Phoenix has a base HP of 34 million. The thing is, Righteous Fire has enough damage that that's... With art, with mana, Righteous Fire... That's still fine. Like, you don't you don't need to weapon swap a phoenix. You just kill the phoenix. Even the, like, the, the like, 100 divine profile I have is still 17 mil. That still kills a phoenix in seconds. Like, you, you do not need to swap for that. Uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna show off. Um. Just... You know, this is an instance where you just map really fast, and you do not need to swap. So, here's a here's a Guardian boss, and he's dead, alright? No need to swap there. But the thing is, there's things in the game that have much, much, much more health than a Guardian. So, let's plug an Uber fight, okay? This is an Uber Cortex. I have Uber, right? be awkward if i didn't i do okay this is an uber cortex and it's maven witnessed so once again i'm gonna clear with righteous fire it's very very nice i was slightly zoomed in there the whole time by the way i don't know why it's uh it's very very good clear what are the mods on this too turbo plus 80 res perfect perfect okay so, Righteous Fire, especially in my setup, doesn't have a lot of pen. So, plus 80 res would be horrible. Horrible. This is like the worst possible mod. So, this is going to take an uber endgame boss with 70% damage reduction. And now they have plus 80 res. This is perfect for the example. So, watch me kill these two bosses with Righteous Fire. Okay? I have a lot of damage. You saw what I did that Phoenix, right? But this is... Could improve. Alright. Could improve. Okay. But watch. Let's, let's bust out the real damage. What happens with the swap mage setup? Well, I have these two bosses here with 80 res. Watch what happens when I press the button. They die instantly. I have half a billion DPS. When I press the button, everything dies. If you've seen my Archmage Battery Vortex video, this is like a more jacked setup than that because it's using the new Penance brand. But uh, one thing you'll notice is I still have Righteous Fire on. So when I weapon swap back, I still have the Righteous Fire. So yeah, I can just weapon swap to the for the ad phase to turn on Righteous Fire again. I have Corrupt Blood 10 stacks on me and I have the entire time. And I don't have immunity. So I'm just going to permanently have 10 stacks of crowd blood, aren't I? Okay, there I can finally regen. Jesus. Alright. But back to the back to the good weapon. Alright, I'm going to put two penance brands down. I'm going to press the button and they're dead. Cool guys don't look at bosses dying. It's, it's that easy. I press button, they die. It's half a billion DPS. Like, and the, the, like, 100 divine setup I have is half this, so, you'd do half that much damage that kills them instantly. And then I'm back to Righteous Fire. Not double damage, darn. Alright. It even does enough damage for a very endgame fight. Let me do a Kurgal. Which, notoriously, at, well, at depth 869, he's not quite HP capped. This is about... 869 is like times 31. And he's got, uh... 62... Or 61.9 million... Or like 822 million base. Whoops. So this is 1.9 billion. This is not quite HP cap. HP cap's 2.147. This is like 90% of HP cap. But like, I'll, I'll show you this. I'll just do... Like, you know, Righteous Fire on the way there. Because I have enough damage for the trash monsters. It's just, Righteous Fire's not going to have a fun time fighting a monster with 2 billion HP. So what do I do? Well, I bust out my old Penance brand and I press the button. Now remember, he's a little tankier than that Cortex because he has 2 billion. 
So phasing him to 50, I need to do a billion damage. But once I press the cloak there... Oh, I don't have flares. This is so awkward. No. Don't die to darkness. All right. Back to righteous fire. He has to... I have to, to phase him there, do a billion damage, but that was about two seconds. And I didn't have double damage focus up, actually, so... Really, with no focus... Usually I have focus, but... You, you know, that's maybe maybe 350 or 400 with no focus. So, like, two and a half second phase, whatever. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. What? The, okay, the, I, I did not bring flares. This is a really bad idea. I'm just dying in the darkness now. I did not bring flares. This is bad. Oh, this is so bad. We're gonna die to no flares. Oh, that's so stupid for the video. No. All right. Well, I might still win. And I press the button and he dies. Well, no, I press the button and he phases, but he has to finish this stupid animation. Okay. Whatever. Oh, look. I, I pressed focus early. Whatever. Alright. How's the damage on max HP? Oh, look. Easy. Alright. So, like... That boss would have taken like five minutes as righteous fire but with the swap setup it's not too bad that looked way harder than it should have because i don't have any flares so i was just getting mauled by darkness the entire time but yeah like this is how you get damage for like an end game setup this is how you go above and beyond what um righteous fire can typically do for like the stupid high damage amounts because Righteous Fire, under no circumstance, will ever be able to get that high, even if there wasn't a dot cap. But you're a mana stacker, so why not employ the weapons that mana stackers have? I'll go over the POB a little bit for this. Um, the basics, though, is instead of using the Prison Guardian setup, you're using a Squire. The reason for this is because when you have auras in your Prison Guardian, you can't weapon swap or it turns all your auras off. So instead, auras now are in this helmet. Don't pay attention to the gear right now. I'm going to show you like the like affordable POB. Um, but I'm using here the Shaper 40% more spell damage, which works on the Righteous Fire. As well as efficacy that I awaken her orb. How you craft this is you get one scepter that has the 40% more spell damage mod. And one scepter that has efficacy. One of the two, ideally, is going to be an opal or a void that has 40% um, implicit. And then you awaken or orb them together. And then you can just go with what you hit, but you can go for um, ideally mana. It took me seven attempts to get a tier four mana roll, and I went with it. I think normally it's about one in ten. And then from there, you have the prefixes done. You just lock prefixes and either like Veiled Chaos, you can use Isling and Research, or you can just craft the 20 Fire Dot Multi. And that's how you do suffixes. You can fill them with just Exalted Slams, whatever. And then you use Squire, which you might think, all oh, Squire's not budget. Squires are two Divines right now. Do I, like, I, I'm just, I don't, if you haven't been paying attention, you might not believe this. Oh, I was wrong. My bad. Squires are 1.4 Divines. Yeah. 1.4 Divine Squire League. So, you know, you might see the Squire setup and think that's the expensive setup, but this is an Awakener Orb and a 1.4 Divine Item, which ends up doing, like, 50% more damage than, like, the Chess Six Link setup. And then it allows the Weapon Swap to the Archmage Staff. The Archmage Staff, you pretty much craft the same way. You get a battery staff that, unfortunately, you have to uh, you have to do uh, like a, like a any exalted orb that can add influence, and then harvest bench it to shaper or elder, and then roll either the elder power charge on crit or the shaper twenty percent more, and then you basically just like try to buy the other one on any staff. It's got to be a base staff though, not a war staff that has the the flip side modifier. You awaken or absorb those two together, and once again, you're trying to hit three good prefixes. This one, once again, took like five to eight attempts, something like that, until I hit tier six mana. I said, okay, well, tier six mana is good enough. Same thing, lock prefixes. Um, either Veiled Chaos or Isling. I did. I hit cast speed of the order. I slammed strength, which is good, but in the POB, I don't have that. I'm going to get rid of that. And then I just craft the double damage focus. Okay. 
honestly not that expensive. Uh, uh, the strength stat slam here was maybe lucky, but I don't have that in the, the POB I'm going to show. Here's the POB, though. So, um, let's first look at my current POB. My current POB with the LA Weak Shapers touch. Um, it's If I manually flame ability, it's 41. But if I just go LA Weakness Shapers, it's 34. Um, and basically, the low budget setup is like exactly half that. Um, because he has 17 with LA Weakness Gloves. And with flammability, it's 20. So it's, it's like exactly half. So I'm going to just use the LA Weakness setup, whatever. So this, this character is a non-Mage Blood setup. This is... Uh, I'll, I'll go through piece by piece, like how realistic this all is. But it's 16k mana and 22k energy shield. It is very tanky. This is this is like 350k fire max hit with 200k cold and lightning. This is able to tank an Uber Maven memory game with this setup. This is very tanky. Um, but let, let me just go through the items, okay? I'll link this POB in the video. Don't worry, it'll be in the description. So for this one, I took my current scepter, where I just did seven or awaken orb attempts that are like a little under divine per attempt, and I'll I'll do the tally here, okay? And um, then I got the prefixes. I locked prefixes, and I literally just crafted fire dot multi. No other suffixes. Obviously, you could double slam this. Try to hit some useful mod, maybe strength int res whatever you you have two extra suffixes for this i literally just cleaned the prefixes and crafted fire dot multi okay so i'm gonna call this since it's about one in ten i'm gonna call this ten divines okay what am i just doing here i'm gonna call this ten divines after i f remember how to use calculator all right the squire we just looked up as 1.4 okay um, for, for my setup, I had a bunch of stupid stuff, like a 90% reservation into God and all this stuff. Um, but I got rid of that all and I dropped malevolence entirely. I dropped my malevolence watcher's eye. I dropped the entire aura and I'm just using no reservation tricks, literally just, um, purity of fire and, uh, clarity and discipline. That's it. That's it. I just dropped the damage aura because this setup does so much more damage than that, it doesn't matter. Uh, so my Indigon, I just corrupted AoE gems because I just wanted to get a 23 Purity of Fire somewhere. You can get this on the Shaper's Touch maybe if you're going to manually flam ability. You can get this on the Helmet. You can do AoE, aura, duration, whatever. This is a not an expensive corrupt. This is like one divine. Okay. Uh, Ivory Tower... I'm just, this is just a vanilla ivory tower six link, no corrupt. Obviously, you could get a corrupt and it'd be better. So, at the price of like a thousand fusings and like a 10 chaos chest, because it's like a mid roll, it's not even a high roll, this is like one divine. Ellie Week Shaper's Touch, I think, are two divines. The, 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 the Shaper's Touch don't even show on my loot filter right now. I've been killing Shaper all week and they, they don't show on my loot filter, so. I think they're like two divines for LA Weakness. But like I said, you could manually flam ability instead. You could run in Feeble if you feel like you need it. Whatever, okay. These boots, I have an, a crafting video on exactly how to do these boots. Except with different implicits. But all you do is you get Fractured Mana on a Hybrid Strength ES pair. And then you use um, a 3 socket resonator with Sanctified, Fundamental, and Hollow. Which is expensive. It's like almost half a divine per attempt right now. But... With Sanctified Fundamental on the hybrid base, you're very likely to hit Strength Int. And you don't have to hit, like, double T1. This is probably, like, a 5 to 10 Divine to get the suffixes. Because uh, I, I just put in, like, Tier 4 Strength, whatever, with a high, a high Int roll. So, then once you're done with that and you have Fractured Mana, all you have to do is... Um, Veiled Chaos with Locked Suffixes with a Bristle Matron. And try to hit the Chill Immune 1 and 3. Because uh, then you can drop Brian King and just craft the Freeze Immune. And you don't need Brian King at all then. You can get one of the middle two that are way nicer. Because like these have cooler mods than this. 
So this is the, this makes you like 10% tankier. That's why I like to go this way. And then I have um, plus two max fire res. Implicit, you pretty much go tier three until you get plus one uh, fire res with grand. Add a tier four ember or a uh, icker. Uh, conflict orbit, oh, hopefully you hit four. Add another tier four icker and try to 50-50 conflict again. Unfortunately, that's a that's a lot, but I, I think the suffixes here cost like five to ten. The prefixes on average cost like four, and the implicits probably cost like four. I'm gonna call these fifteen divines. But I crafted these earlier in the league, a pair this good, for like five or six divines. Um, the problem is prices have gone up since then. The 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 hollow fossils did not go up. But the conflict orbs and the tier 4 embers went up. That's the only thing that's really changed. I did a 3 rat where I just assumed you took fractured mana, threw some essence at it or some fundamentals, or just bought it off the trade site like this, which is what I typically do. I just put a search string and buy these exactly as is. And then you just have a resistance and hit fractured, or in, uh, just crafted energy shield. The just 5 mod... And then I picked the middle roll on 3 rat. The way you, you... You basically get amulets like this for like... Um... Like one divine. And then you gamble them on Jorgen. In research from Betrayal. Tier 3. And it's a 1 in 7 chance to hit uh, 3 rat. And like I said, this is a middle roll. So... About one divine per attempt. For this quality. You can go higher quality if you want. But like for this quality, it's like a divine per attempt. Um, one in seven, but you have to farm out the Jorgens, so there's some time, or you could buy them for, like, a half divine. I'm just gonna call this 15 divines, alright? You, you can, if you put in the effort, get this for cheaper, if you're farming the Jorgens, but I'm just gonna call this 15. Uh, this ring is just a five stat ring. I just threw in res strength, it doesn't have to be T1, the, whatever, on, like, a mana roll with fractured, or with crafted ES. I'm gonna call this, um, two divines. But truthfully, if you have a search string up, you can buy this exact ring for, like, a divine, usually, or sometimes even, like, 100 chaos, because, like, this item just drops off the ground. The person who's selling this item created it with a scroll of wisdom. Every league I buy rings this good for, like, sometimes even 50 chaos, but I'm just gonna call it two divines, okay? Shav's ring with some defense quality for regen. These are not expensive. I'm gonna call it a divine, though, because of the quality. Alright, Stygian Vice, I have a video on this. Hunter Base, uh, Int Essence, until you hit Attributes. You can get a res on this instead. I just picked Tier 5 Strength. I think that's generous. Once you hit Suffixes, you lock it with a Bristle Matron. Veiled Chaos. Uh, I picked one of the Hybrid Defense mods. They're All three of them are fine. Life's okay, too. Mana's okay, then you craft the other. Five outcomes are like all the possible outcomes. You basically hit one, craft the other. So in this case, I just said I hit hybrid defense and crafted mana and left the third prefix open. This is still a nice belt, though. I'm going to call this 15 divines, but you can craft this yourself probably cheaper. Okay. I've been putting this jewel in some, uh, some of the items. I have four of these. Um, oh, that's not the one. All right, I don't even want that one, actually. I'm going to switch this to this one. There we go. I'll lower my clarity level by one, too. There we go. Okay. So here, uh, I just put this this jewel, just like an abyss jewel with like some res, mana, whatever. Th I'm going to call this a divine, but if you're, if you're searching, you can buy these for cheaper if you buy them slowly. But I have like five of these jewels in. I'm going to call this five divines. Okay. I, I think you can buy those cheaper if you're patient, but whatever. Okay. Flasks are just, like, basic, like, shock immune, three charge on hit, whatever. Just roll these yourself with alteration orbs. Unnatural instinct. You might think this is a high expensive item. I'll go over this setup on the tree in a second. These are one divine. I had one drop this league, and I was like, ooh, I probably just made, like, four divines. They're one divine. They might even be cheaper now. They're one divine. Uh, two of these large cluster setups are a little bit expensive. Uh, they're probably three divines each, so I'm going to call this six. The, the two split personalities I decided to not go cheap on. These are like seven divines, and I have two of them. Um, but I have the int mana ones. Watcher's Eye, I just picked like one random discipline mod and the clarity mod. The clarity mod is most expensive. You don't need the other mod, but this is a ten divine Watcher's Eye. 
you can use like a five divine watch that just has the clarity mod whatever um this is the other large uh that which was taken uh i'm gonna call this like five divines because there's a lot of different stats you can get you can get like re there's like two different regen ones there's it only rolls tier one mods there's like 40 strength int there's the es is max uh is extra max from mana or man's extra max from es whatever try to find like two good stats I just picked a one stat that which was taken, and I'm going to call it five divines, but obviously yours is going to have a couple more stats that do something, whatever. Okay. Another one. These I'm going to call two divines. I'll get to this setup in a second. Healthy minds aren't much. Um, this one you could swap for the other one, whatever. And then the last thing is the weapon swap. Like I said, I took the strength off this roll. But this is just like Awakener Orb, I hit tier 6 mana, locked prefixes, and then Veiled Chaos. And then I crafted double damage. This is like 10 Divines. Um, let's even call it like, yeah, whatever. 116 Divine. I don't think I missed anything here. Oh, Charms. Okay, no, my Charms are money. I have like the Time of Need Charms with Strength in it. These are like 4 Divines apiece. Uh, and then this charm with ash on hit. I have a perfect one. You don't have a perfect one, obviously. It's like two divines. Okay, there's where we get to 126. There we go. 126 with the charms. All right. So, like I said, you could make this setup cheaper, but this setup has 23k energy shield. Like a quarter million max hit and like 17k mana. This is like... This, this is insano mode. Like, okay, I'll, I'll send this to 10 fourth 100. Also, this would be 50 shock. Because Pendant's brand will guarantee 50 shock. Yeah, look at that. Quarter billion DPS on the Pendant's brand swap. Actually, you probably, you probably go higher. Because this one has more... This setup has more mana. What's, what's 0.65 times 16,750? Yeah, 10.8. Okay, there you go. Quarter billion damage. All right. Let me go over this setup here. I'm using uh, Unnatural Instinct with uh, Militant Faith and Inner Conviction. So if you get Dominus on Militant Faith, it makes your power charges give you more spell damage. And then you don't get Frenzy Charges, which I'm not generating them anyways. And this is 12% more damage for Righteous Fire. Um, I picked this one single node to have Thoughts and Prayers, which is 5% of mana's extra maximum energy shield uh these might be i put this as two divines because you might have the trouble finding one but there are 114 combinations that have this i would get one with dominus and maybe some resistances and then this is kind of a cheesy trick where it gives you all these five de five devotion nodes so this unnatural instinct is giving me um 55 90 devotion 90 devotion which then fills this out this puts me at 155 and that gives me the activation for these. So this is a really good setup. Um, I would buy one of those many, many, many combos that can just give you this setup. This one node with like inner conviction. And like I said, this setup, I just only for the auras. All I did was like purity of fire, arrogance, clarity. And then I just put Discipline in the Eternal Blessing. That's it. There's no Malevolence. That's it. So there's no Reservation stuff with Auras. I'm not taking Aura Nodes. I'm not taking, like, yeah. My end game setup is, because I am fitting Malevolence with some really cheesy, expensive stuff. But you don't need that for this. So, yeah. This is a 126 Divine setup with that P.O.B., that has 23k energy shield, 17k mana, and does half as much damage as, as the Mage Blood setup here. Um, I'll link that POB in the description, but I think this is like the apex way to play it. It's a very, very fast, like full screen Righteous Fire that just obliterates everything for mapping. Everything you pass through dies, even up to like a Guardian. And then when you start punching above your weight class against, like, some uber pinnacle bosses with tank mods like that Cortex, or, like, that 2 billion HP deep delve boss, 
that's when you're in a domain where righteous fire damage is not enough. You use the swap staff to do a quarter billion DPS with that POB, and you just obliterate it. Like, you will never struggle with damage again in the game in this setup. Uh, and it's still fairly tanky. This is this is the final form of Righteous Fire. This will probably be the final video I make on it for this league. Uh, throughout all the stages of evolution, I've posted some, you know, the pre-league video, the last video, you know, is the Charmeleon, and th this is the Charizard. This is the final evolution. S Righteous Squire with Swap Mage. I'll see you guys for my next video. Uh, I've got some other Arc Mage plans for that. Catch you guys next time.